What's up everyone? This is going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial going over my trading strategy and exactly what I look out for and how I trade in depth of five crucial steps to how I navigate the markets. The first step is creating levels of interest. I'm going to dive deep into how I create these levels. Point number two is gauging the reaction at those levels of interest. Point number three is creating a trading plan then managing my risk around this plan. And then point number five, very important, the cherry on top of the cake, is following that plan and controlling emotions. Before we begin this, I do want to say that if you trade Forex, options, stocks, crypto, futures, no matter what you trade, this can be translated to those markets because it's simply a navigation tool of any auction place or any marketplace. So let's now dive deep into point number one, which is creating levels of interest. And there are many different ways that I create levels of interest. Some I view the same, some I view very different, and the different levels I trade differently around. Now the first one is obviously supply and demand price imbalances. This essentially is a core structure to my trading. I look for supply or demand price imbalances. Now, one thing that I do want to say about levels of interest is I relate my trading and I, I trade very similar to back in the pit trading days before electronic trading was a thing where it was an open outcry system where you would have a numerous amount of traders in a large pit buying and selling. If a large buyer or seller wanted to get into the market, they could scream, they could shout, they could use a hand signal. But my trading is very relatable to pit trading days. That's because I view the stock market as an auction place. So coming up with levels of interest essentially puts me in the position to be trading where I should be trading at or important levels that the market has referenced. For me, supply or demand price imbalances is the first thing that I look for. Point number two are key levels developed off the time and sales in level two large buying or selling at a specific price, support resistance with multiple touches confirmed by the tape, highs or lows. These essentially are the five main points how I create levels of interest. And let's get into the first one in depth, which is supply and demand imbalances. What I look for are areas of consolidation where a period of consolidation simply indicates the market has spent a lot of time at that level. And if the market has spent a lot of time around that general price range, then it's a good chance that we have a high amount of volume trading at that range because the market has spent quite amount of time at it. Now I want to see this area of consolidation or a period of balance or a period of tight price fluctuations. Could be a 30 minute period, could be a one hour period, could be a four hour period. But I wanna see consolidation where the market has balanced or based prior to a large drop or a large rally. The larger the drop, the more aggressive the drop or the rally, and the more violent the drop or the rally validates a better or a stronger supply or demand imbalance. Uh, so in this example, on this chart right here, you could see this is on a three hour time frame, a very, very large aggressive drop after if we were to go into a smaller time frame this green bar right here go into this chart has multiple periods of consolidation in that general range followed by a large drop to the downside validating a supply zone or an area that i'm interested in trading at if the market tests it at some point in the future one thing about these levels of interest is they are just levels of interest just because we have a zone or just because i have a level marked on my charts does not mean I will be trading that level. We have another uh, important aspect to this equation. Here are all the time frames that I use. If you want to pause the video and mark those down. Now, one of the most important aspects are key levels developed off the time and sales and level two, which is the tape, or simply reading the order flow. What I personally look for is large buying or large selling activity at a specific price. Because if I see large buying at, let's just say, a support level, then I know that's something that I have to trade around or that's something that I have to be watching. Or if I see a large amount of selling activity step in at the middle of the range and the market corresponds and drops because of that selling, then that area or maybe that seller that just entered the market is something that I have to keep a close eye on. Every single one of my levels of interest 
are just levels or areas that I am keeping a close eye on once the market tests it at a future price point. So on this candlestick chart, there's going to be resistance that forms around 4786, 4788. We cannot truly see the resistance. Yes, you could see wicks. Yes, you could see the market rejected here. But diving deep into the volume and understanding what's going on of why those candles formed, you have to think about this for a second. And how I view the market, again, is an auction. So why candles form is because of the relationship between price and volume going on behind the scenes. Candles simply represent transactions getting transacted on the open marketplace. So in this example, I cannot see strong resistance other than the wicks and other than the rejections from volume off this candlestick chart. However, looking at the volume, we're going to see very strong resistance, especially looking at the time and sales. What we're going to see here is on this chart, I've highlighted two green lines here representing the two highest and most important aspects to the orders or the completed transactions that came on the tape. We can see large prints starting at 4788 of 250 contracts at 931. And then 956 contracts or lots because I'm talking about future contracts at 934 at 4786. This is when the volume started to come in. And I do want to say context is very important. You will drive yourself crazy if you stare at the time and sales, every single ticket that comes in. Context is important because despite this activity, what I mean by context is you want to see what the market does after these prints came in. So what I saw was signs of a possible buyer unloading at these 88s and at these 47, 86s. This is now a depth of market. It's the same information that we could see on a time and sales, but essentially now it's, it's visually different on a depth of market. What this shows me is a volume profile, which shows me volume at specific price points where we can split volume by buy and we can split volume by sell. We can also see level two data, which are the bid and ask columns. We can see recent trades. And the most important thing that I look for is this VPD column, which is a volume profile delta. On this chart, we can see significantly higher or abnormal, something out of the norm. I don't have a specific quantity that I look for. I don't look for a specific number. I just look for outliers in the data that gives me a reason to watch a specific price point. In this example, we can see large positive buying delta around the 4788s, 4787s, and then directly below that, we could see large selling delta around to these 86s corresponding exactly what we saw here on the time and sales 88s 86s same exact info over here but this is just a delta to me this is something that i want to keep an eye on if we are below it i want to see it act as resistance if we are above it i want to see it act as support it could be a larger participant entering or possibly exiting the market so this is what it looks like on a candlestick chart other than the market selling off we simply cannot see the volume patterns that are getting displayed behind the scenes if we were not looking at the order flow or looking at the tape. Now, because we sold off, and this is what I mean about context being very, very important, because we sold off, this gives me, now that we are below it, something that I have to watch moving forward. In the next 30 minutes, this 4788 level was rejected two other times, and we saw a very similar selling activity at that level the two other times that it was tested. This green arrow is where it formed. About 10 minutes later, we came back into it, rejected. Five minutes after that, came back into it and also rejected, forming a head and shoulders pattern. So again, this kind of validates what I've been saying about your the patterns that you watch, support, resistance, your wedges, your trend lines, they form because of what's going on behind the scenes with the order flow. So wouldn't it make sense to validate your patterns if you're a pattern trader with the order flow? It would give it more conviction and more confidence because the two other rejections, three total, shows that this activity at these 88s, now we have 1,000, 1,200, 1,200, 800, is getting larger, the volume is getting thicker, and this is it after three other attempts showing there is valid interest 
at this level. Remember, we are creating levels of interest. Because of the volume getting thicker, and because the market is reacting to it three other times that it was tested, shows me this is a level of interest that the market is reacting to. This is what the, the profile on the first test, you can see lighter volume, and on the second test, it has gotten much thicker and much larger. Now also, support resistance with multiple touches confirmed by the tape. If you see a level, does not matter what time frame, get tested multiple times, one time, two times, three times, four times, then that becomes something that I have to watch because for some odd reason, the market is not liking the market to move up or down from that level after the market has reacted and respected that level of support or resistance. And also, I love looking at highs or lows. This could be pre-market highs, pre-market lows, intraday highs or intraday lows. It does not matter. These are good areas for other traders to put their stop losses at or just simply buy a breakout or sell a breakdown. And for other people to be buying or selling, there's liquidity there. And most of the time, you know, we break a high or break a low and then reverse because it's just a good area to pick up liquidity for larger participants to get in or out a position. So now once we have these levels of interest based off of these five points, now my step after this is gauging the reaction at those levels of interest in a sort of confirmation aspect. I want to say, okay, I just marked that level of interest. I don't know if it's valid or not. I don't know if I misread it. I don't know if what I'm reading is true, but my job now is to gauge what the market does. If that level is tested again, is the market reacting to that level? What I see a lot of traders doing is they create levels of interest. I want to see the S and P 500 break above 4,800 or I want to see Tesla break under $100. That's having a level of interest if that's your support or resistance level. But what a lot of those traders do is, is as soon as it comes to $100, or as soon as it breaks out above 4,800 on the S&P 500, they automatically get in that trade just because the market hits their level of interest. Again, if that works for you, try it. But for me, I need to gauge that what the market does at Tesla at 100 or what the market does when the S&P breaks above 4,800. What is the market doing and how is it reacting to it? At every single moment and at every single price, the market represents the mindset of each market participant. The S&P is trading at 4,800 and we're seeing a lack of volume. That shows me that at 4,800, the market participant, since volume is lacking, is not agreeing with buying or selling at that price. And that information alone gives important insight about the market's auction. The market participants either accept or reject what price is. If participants accept price, that usually means continuation is likely. If participants reject price, that usually means a reversal is coming. So to trade well around these levels of interest, I need a confirmation signal. Confirmation for me is vital. Simply, my confirmation is understanding if buyers will buy after I get long. If I get long and I got confirmation and I see other people buy after I buy, and then the market does sell off and I take a losing trade on it, well, my trade wasn't bad. My trade just lacked other people buying after I got long. We can get confirmation yet still be incorrect. Will others sell after I short it? This is essentially what I am trying to gauge because it gives me my edge, else I'm simply swinging in the darkness. If I don't have confirmation, or if I can't read the volume, or I don't understand what price is doing, then I have no reason to open up a position or trade. It gives me my edge, and I don't want to be swinging in the darkness. I want to be swinging when there is light, and I want to be swinging when everything is clear to myself. So once the market is trading at my level of interest, does not matter which one it is, I am using tools to gauge if there is interest from other participants at this level. Tools such as a footprint chart, tools such as a heat map, tools such as a level two, time and sales, normal conventional candlestick chart. So the first thing that I'm watching for is aggressive buying but no follow through or buyers which become trapped or absorption to the upside. So essentially what this means is if I see a lot of green prints to the upside or I see a lot of aggressive buyers hitting the ask or hitting the offer, meaning they want to get in now, they're aggressive, they're violent, they don't care what price they pay, 
They're so aggressive, but the market is not respecting how aggressive those buyers are. That may mean there is somebody absorbing on the passive side, a passive seller, absorbing all the aggressive buying. And if that's the case, or if buyers become trapped, the market is a advertising mechanism to facilitate trade. If we see aggressive buying but no follow through, it's a good indication the market may want to go down to test if those buyers will buy at lower prices. Flip the switch, aggressive selling down but no follow through. If I see the market break a low a day or break a support level and there's tons of selling but the market cannot correspond to all that aggressive selling and it does not move far down, that indicates number one, those sellers could become trapped. Number two, there could be absorption, meaning a passive buyer is taking all that selling liquidity. And if that's the case, the market is going to move up to test if sellers will sell at higher prices. It is an advertising mechanism. Number two, I'm looking for offers. This is seen on the level two. Offers or ask are just passive sellers, and that could serve as a ceiling or resistance, similar to the point number one, the first one about aggressive buying. Same thing to the downside. I want to see bids, which are passive buyers, serving as a floor, and this is how support normally forms. I also want to see aggressive trades hitting the bid or the ask after, this is after, point number one or two occurs. And point number four is a lower high or a higher high or just a failed breakout attempt. Now, these are mainly for playing reversals. If I am playing continuation, I simply just want to see point number three in its entirety. If I see point number one or point number two, that's a little bit of a red flag if I am playing continuation. But continuation only, point number three is what I look for. All four of these points are for reversals. So going back to that example earlier of that rejection at 4788 where we saw that buyer unloading or we just saw that tons of unusual volume activity, later in the day, the market returns to 4788. It did not like it, and I was watching for a possible rejection because here, the first green arrow is where this level formed. Then about three hours after, in the same day, the market came back up and retested where those sellers were actively present earlier in the day. If you were to mark a normal resistance level, you know, a lot of people would just mark a high. They would maybe mark this high, and it wouldn't put any emphasis on why this general level forms. It would just put emphasis on where a high is or where the market rejected. So that's why I trade with understanding why it forms and where it formed and where the selling activity actually originated. Looking deeper than the candlestick charts is where my greatest edge comes from. The market retests this later in the day and my job is to now gauge the reaction to put a valid trade on. So now this is introducing a delta footprint chart. I've made videos on this in the past if you're watching my channel and you're new, I recommend looking at my other videos because I have tons of other lessons on this. But essentially what this shows me is delta by price and volume by price. Meaning delta is ask minus bid volume. If we see blue delta, that means it's positive. Meaning there is more aggressive buying hitting the ask at that price. If we see a negative delta or red volume, that means there is more aggressive selling hitting the bid than aggressive buying hitting the offer at that specific price. In this example, we could see the market returning to 4788, 4786 in this general green line box that I drew up here corresponding to what we saw earlier. This right arrow is what we're seeing right here. We are seeing aggressive buying by the positive delta in this area right over here, but no upside follow through. If there is tons of buyers trying to buy the market up and they are not getting rewarded despite showing tons of effort, that's a good indication if the market does want to aggressively sell lower, we are going to bring it much lower to advertise prices lower to buyers. So in this example, you could see the rally into it, you could see the aggressive buying, and then you could see the aggressive selling then step in thereafter. Here's the same exact thing that we are seeing on this chart. Just now we are seeing it on a depth of market. No matter what tool you use, it's going to show you the same information. I use a depth of market, footprint, heat map. They show me the same stuff. It's just simply a different visual. It's like you reading English, you reading Spanish, you reading Italian. It's going to tell you the same sentence. It's just going to tell you it in a different language. 
Here we could see all the aggressive buying by this positive delta at this 4788 level. Remember, location key, that key level. The reaction, tons of buying here again, but no follow through. Then aggressive selling, you could see down here by these red lines, stepped in as the market rejected off of that much lower. Point number two, we can see offers, which are passive sellers, serving as a ceiling or resistance at this level. Flip it if we're looking to buy the market along it, you want to see bids. Everything that I'm explaining could just be reversed to buy or sell. The concepts are, are interchangeable. This is now a heat map. Now what a heat map shows me are completed transactions, recent bidder ask trades, and a historical and current level two. If I go to the bathroom and miss something, I could simply come back to this historical data five minutes ago and see it. Whereas if I'm on a time in sales, I cannot really see that if I missed it. In this example, we could see an offer. What I mean by an offer is it is a passive seller on the ask shown on the level two. This first green arrow right here, as you can see this yellow line, it's like yellow, orange, and red, right where my cursor's at. That shows me there is a heat map, meaning a higher amount of selling passively at that level. This tells me there is an offer serving as a ceiling if the market could not break it, especially if the guy re-offers, meaning after a passive seller gets filled, he simply re-offers acting more as a ceiling or acting more as a resistance level. By this third arrow, he re-offers and rejoins the market after he got filled. How do I know he got filled? Well, the market came at it at the second arrow. His offer got hit. You could see a green bubble there, which means aggressive buyer hit that passive seller. And then that heat map or that orange line right here did not appear after he got filled. It only appeared about five minutes later when he re-offered after the market sold off. Also point number three reaction. I want to see aggressive trades hitting the bid or ask after those point number one or two occurs. As you can see here, we rejected 4788. And after we rejected it, aggressive selling hitting the bid caused the market to further sell off, causing those trap buyers to be underwater, causing them to be in pain, and causing the market to just capitalize to the downside. And then the last step is kind of self-explanatory, which is simply a lower high or a higher high or a failed breakout above or failed breakdown below attempt at that level of interest. In this example, we could see the morning high. Three hours later, we hit that high, 4788, and also put in a lower high. If the market broke this high and then immediately failed, that's also a good indication that the market may want to reject and reverse much lower as in this example, we sold off and the volume is there to confirm that. Now we have creating a trading plan. Once I have point number one, which is developing a level of interest and point number two, a reaction at that level of interest, now my trading edge is present. My edge is what gives me my advantage over other market participants. It's when the probabilities are in my favor to trade. I never know a trade will work out. Even if I have a plan, I am wrong. I take losing trades. I take winning trades. But when I have point number one and two, I know the probabilities are in my favor. Even when probabilities are in my favor, I still can lose. This is the equation that I have to put a valid trade on. First component is where, that's my level of interest. My second component is why, is my reaction. Why should I enter the market? If I have two, I have a valid trade. Every single time I click the buy or sell button, I need to have a valid trading plan. What does this plan consist of? Very, very important. I see people go into the market blind without a plan, without a thesis, without an edge. And that is the very, very harmful for your account. My trading plan consists of an edge, confirmation, or thesis. Okay, I'm long here because of we're at a demand zone. I'm seeing buying stepping in. This is when probabilities are in my favor. I have a thesis, I have confirmation, and this is my edge. Point number two, very important. Actually, the most important aspect to it. Stop loss. Where is my analysis proven incorrect? I place my stop loss of where and when my analysis becomes incorrect. If I am entering at $100 and I am wrong or my analysis less likely to occur if we break under $99, then I will place my stop loss under 99 because that proves I am incorrect on my original thesis or my original trading plan. So place a stop loss and place it at a point where you are wrong based on your original analysis. Also having a static target. 
for me, I have hard targets, meaning I'm targeting X price. But then again, what if the market's really strong at that target? And what if the market wants to continue running up? Then having a static target will help you maybe scale out there, get out 75%, 90%. And that's what I will do some of the times if my target hits, depending on the trade that I am opening. Where can the market reverse or where can it be proven correct? That's where you must place your target and holding runners is optional. I'm not the biggest fan of doing it, but if I will do it, I have a static target. Now, point number four, the most important point is managing risk. Before I enter a trade, I never know if that trade will work out for me or not. I cannot sit here and say, okay, I'm entering long. This thing is 100% of the time going to work out for me. I never know before I enter if I'm going to profit or if I'm going to lose on it. I will just make that clear and no trader in the world will ever know that if it's going to work or if it's not going to work before they enter. I know when the probabilities are higher in my favor, but I never know 100% certainty if it will work. That's the unknown factor. The unknown factor is we don't know. I don't know what the market will do next. I don't know how it will do it. And I don't know if I will win or lose on it. However, what I do know is how much I will lose if I am wrong. That's really the only thing we can know in our trading. We can only know how we control the trade, manage our emotions, and most importantly, we can know how much we will lose if we are wrong. That is the risk component. So before I enter a trade, I know exactly how much I am going to lose if I am wrong, and I know how much I'm going to win if I am correct. It is the known factor to a trade. I cannot control the outcome of the market. I can only control the outcome of myself, and my emotions. Very key point right there, write that down. If I hesitate, if I think too long, then I don't have a trade. My best trades come from not thinking and just acting. My worst trades come from thinking too much. The minute I think too much, I may miss the move or enter late skewing my risk to reward. My best advice is stop thinking and start doing. The minute you think is the minute fear creeps in. And the minute fear creeps in is the minute you are going to lose, especially in the long term. You never want to enter if your risk to reward is skewed. And a lot of the times that comes by thinking way too much about every possible outcome, how much I'm going to lose, or am I going to be wrong or what's going to happen? I'm, I'm nervous. I'm fearful. And that is the wrong approach to the market. Sometimes I sit here and think too much and I know not to enter the trade. And then most importantly, following the plan you created and controlling your emotions. There are only two ways that I sell a position. Number one is if my target hits. And number two, if my stop loss triggers, if you can follow this, if you have a problem with getting out too early or staying in the trade too late, listen to this carefully. There are two ways I sell a position. One, if my target hits, two, if my stop loss triggers, everything else in between is noise. Think about this. The market's not going to move straight up in my favor all the time. It's not going to move straight down in my favor all the time. Pullbacks, bounces, consolidation, they are completely normal. If the market just rocket shit up to our target all the time, then there would be no such thing as a market. These pullbacks, these consolidations, these periods of quietness, stillness should not freak you out. That means you're focusing too much on the money and you are simply letting your emotions get involved. Size down if you need to. Present moment awareness is key. Focus on the present moment. Stop worrying about the past. Stop worrying about the future. Present moment awareness. Trade in the now. I'm going to end the video on that note. If you enjoyed it, I would appreciate you to like this video, comment any questions, and definitely subscribe to the channel and check out the links in the description below for some very good trading resources. But I'm ending it. Peace.